Hey, my name is Dr. Sean Price, clinical coordinator here at The Fix. Um, we're going through the thyroid pathway. We are on video number eight of this process, and um, today we're going to talk about stress. Now, the adrenal glands are the key to stress. So let's say you're walking in the woods and you see a bear, and that bear gets ready to charge you, and so you know you're about to die. So your fight or flight response kicks in. That's our stress response. Your pupils dilate, all the blood leaves your digestive set track. Stress response, blood leaves the digestive tract, affects the gut. Blood leaves the digestive tract, goes into all the muscles, you get ready to fight or run. Now, how does that happen? The hypothalamus picks up on the stressor. Remember the signal from the body to the brain, feedback, there's a stressor. Hypothalamus picks up on that, signals the pituitary, which then sends a signal to the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands will then release cortisol, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. So you have this response, the body releases these hormones, you fight that bear or you run from that bear, everything goes back to normal because you had a physical response that burned off these hormones, okay? But let's say you have a stressful job, let's say you have a stressful marriage, let's say your kids are stressful, let's say you have all these issues going on. You have chronic stress. So you're gonna increase adrenal fatigue or output and you're gonna increase cortisol. That's gonna cause weight gain in and of itself. When cortisol is elevated, Cortisol pulls blood sugar with it. So your blood sugar metabolism, you have a normal range, you get hungry, you eat, or I'm sorry, you get hungry, you eat, blood sugar goes up, and then it comes down, and it goes up, and so on and so forth. That's your, your appetite. If cortisol levels are elevated, blood sugar eleva ele levels are gonna go up because that's what happens with, with, you need that extra fuel to fuel the stress response. So your, blood is, your liver's gonna release extra glucagon. You're gonna get this blood sugar elevation when blood sugar and cortisol go up, that pulls thyroid function down. So chronic stress can cause elevated blood sugar, which of course could lead to diabetes. It can also cause decreased thyroid function. Again, this is not a thyroid issue. This is the body balancing itself out. Cortisol and blood sugar go up, thyroid goes down. They do like this. They counterbalance each other. You can have hypothyroid symptoms because of chronic stress, okay? Let's say this keeps on going on, keeps on happening, and eventually the adrenal glands start to wear out. So then you start getting into adrenal fatigue. All right, so now you have low cortisol levels. Now just because your cortisol levels are low, if you have high stress, the body still picks up on that and still causes that suppression of thyroid function. Okay, so that still can cause the low thyroid function. But now you've got your cortisol levels going down. So now you have adrenal fatigue. That's gonna decrease your energy. That's gonna decrease your um, your body's ability to handle further stress. It's going to decrease your body's ability to heal. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. Okay. On top of that, your liver produces cholesterol. When, which then converts into pregnenolone, which then converts into progesterone, which converts into cortisol in two different pathways, also converts into DHEA, testosterone, and estrogen. So when you're under acute stress in the beginning and your adrenals have not yet fatigued, your adrenal glands are gonna start producing, are, are gonna need extra fuel and extra hormone to produce that extra cortisol. So your cholesterol level is naturally gonna go up when you have excess stress, okay? What's the first thing you do when you get, we have excess, or we have a high cholesterol, they put you on a statin, which is a whole other process. But your cholesterol levels are gonna go up. So this process gets fed. Now, when your adrenal glands start to wear out and you get into adrenal fatigue, cholesterol could still stay elevated because it's trying to produce enough fuel to, to or enough um, the foundation for the hormones to produce cortisol because cortisol is a life-sustaining process. So what happens is this pregnenolone is what's called a mother hormone, and it converts into progesterone, cortisol, testosterone, and estrogen. If you have adrenal fatigue um, and your cortisol levels are gonna be chronically low, then what's gonna end up happening is because cortisol is a life-sustaining activity, the, um, the body is gonna to try to get those levels up. So what's, what'll happen is pregnenolone, which is a, um, it's a rate-limiting step, there's only so much pregnenolone made, so what's gonna happen is the body's gonna start siphoning those resources to try to feed that cortisol to get that level back up. When that happens, that's gonna throw off the progesterone, the testosterone, and the estrogen. Okay, so now your hormones are gonna go out of balance. You're gonna end up having hormone issues. 
um, which is not anything to do with your hormonal system. It's completely related to adrenal uh, fatigue. Um, and we can do, we're gonna do a whole video series on that as well. Um, but that's another, another subject. But you do have hormone imbalances. Now here's what's key and how this relates to the thyroid gland. There are a lot of what we call estrogen precursors in our environment. So for example, if you uh, use a lot of plastics in your food, those are estrogen precursors. If you eat a lot of soy, that's an estrogen precursor. Um, a lot of perfumes, a lot of lotions, a lot of creams, a lot of deodorants have hormones in them and they can cause estrogen to increase. So what can happen is if you're getting these exogenous sources of estrogen outside of not getting the right level of progesterone to oppose it, then your body becomes estrogen dominant. And as you probably know, estrogen dominance can lead to all kinds of different issues, breast cancer, so on and so forth. But outside of that, being estrogen dominant, if estrogen is dominant, it loves to bind to thyroid binding globulin. So estrogen will actually come up and start binding to the receptor sites for thyroid binding globulin. What that does is that will block T4. That'll block T4 and not let T4 bind to thyroid binding globulin. So what does that mean? That means that even if your lab values are normal, even if your digestive tract is totally normal, your liver's doing great, but you have a hormone imbalance because of adrenal fatigue, then estrogen dominance can block that thyroid binding globulin and you will have underconversion. What if you have all of this going on? What if you have stress? Stress will cause digestive issues and then you have all the gut and the liver and all these different areas are malfunctioning. And on top of all of this for underconversion, you have now thyroid binding globulin not being able to bind T4. That's gonna further propagate hypothyroid symptoms. And again, none of this has to do with the thyroid gland. Synthroid is not gonna fix any of this. So these are very, very important factors to keep in mind, okay? And the last thing that we're gonna go over is gonna be blood sugar on the next video and show you how that affects this whole process as well. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post below, um, and we'll see you on the next video.